Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, February 5th, 2021, and this is our weekly video. We'll take a look and see what went on last week over on eBay, what's happening at Sotheby's, some auction results. There's some really strong auction results, by the way, on eBay this past week. Some things did awfully well, and uh, they were in the newsletter, so many of you are aware of it. We're going to go through those prices. And I was really glad all of you enjoyed seeing our dog Skipper so much last weekend. That was fun for us. Um, we watched the comments come in over the weekend while we were up in New Hampshire, and it was 5 below zero on Saturday, 10 below. <laughs> It was very cold, and uh, uh, it, it was. Uh, I was glad you all enjoyed seeing him. Um, we have another dog named April, um, who we, we've not put in yet. She was asleep in the other room. She's sort of a snoozy old dog, and uh, didn't come out until later on in the day. But uh, at some point, we'll, we'll bring him back. We'll put him in from time to time. Maybe give you a look at him when they're running on the beaches around here. Well, April walks, Skipper runs. But at any rate, they're both great dogs. We love them. Um, so that's that. Any rate, here we are. And a couple of things I wanted to bring up before we uh, got into the eBay and Katawiki and all the usual stuff. Uh, first, I wanted to point out that uh, we updated the, uh, for the global auction page uh, members, we updated the auction results again this week. And uh, we added the Sotheby sale. It just started today. It's an online sale of snuff bottles. So if you're a snuff bottle buyer, this is a really nice collection. It's taking place in Hong Kong. But don't let that scare you because shipping a snuff bottle um, from Hong Kong, as you know, um, or to anywhere in the world is nothing. You know, 70 bucks, you can get it shipped. It's not a big deal. There's some nice examples in here, some beautiful Famil Rose ones, carved stone, hard stone, uh, you name it. They've got it all. And the estimates look pretty reasonable. So if you're on the global pages, check it out and uh, go over and poke around and see how they're going to do. And also, uh, Christie's uh, has up now their sales coming up in March. Uh, there's some pretty good auctions coming, as you might expect. These are all going to be in New York. Um, and this is the an, an, another another sale from the Junkun collection, who we've seen many times. He had one of the largest private art collections of the world. Um, and this is going to be very, very good. It'll be important Chinese art. So I'm assuming there'll be, as you can see here, there's a, a nice looking jade. There'll be uh, probably bronzes and all kinds of other things, some good stoneware and, and so forth. So we'll, we'll keep you abreast of that. And we'll try, we're going to try and record some of them too. We'll do a video on them um, while they're live. As long as they're happening at the time of day, we can get at them. And uh, also Chinese important works of art, great looking um, incense burner table here and a whole bunch of other things. And then the uh, br bronzes from the David Shapiro collection. I don't know if you caught this. It was an Art Fix Daily a few months ago. Uh, David Shapiro uh, a collection of bronzes is, a, is a, one of the great private collections of early bronzes. Uh, Jim Lally did an exhibition on uh, uh, his bronzes a number of years ago, maybe 2014 or 15. Uh, just uh, great, rare, rare, rare Shang bronze, uh, like the one shown here. And uh, I think this is estimated, you know, at three to four million dollars. And um, there'll be some real, really nice objects in there. It's a well-documented collection. And uh, we'll have the, uh, I think if you, you go over to the reference section on, on the bitamount.com on our site, uh, you'll find this uh, 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 bronze collection of the Shapiro's uh, that was done at Lally's. And if it's not, we'll get it up there. We have, we have a number of good Lally uh, catalogs to share, and uh, we hope to get them all processed out this week. Uh, they actually go back a few years, but um, we're finally getting around to doing them. So check those out. Uh, Lally, by the way, Jim Lally used to be at Sotheby's, and uh, 25 or so years ago, he opened up his own store in New York, and he's one of the one of the finest dealers in the world. Certainly, one of the you know he's certainly in the top five, uh, and uh, he's a scholar. Uh, we've shared his uh, lectures um, that he's given over the years. Um, uh, with you all here in the past, and the newsletter page is the second video, and uh, he, he's quite a guy. He, he's got an amazing reputation, he's, and he's built a very good name for himself. So there you are. All right, now uh, let's see here. How did things do last week? Well, let's see. There's a few things to bring up here. Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention was, let's get over here to this. Um, this sale is coming up. This is at Bronx next week, or this coming week, in, in a few days, is this really nice China trade painting uh, of the American uh, offices in the Hongs. Um, the American flag on it. These are fairly rare. Uh, this particular painting came from the DuPont family collection. And uh, uh, Brunks is a very, very reputable auction house uh, down in North Carolina. So if they said it came from the DuPont collection, it came from the DuPont collection. You can take their word for it. Uh, but this is a wonderful painting. 
and uh, see how that does. I think it's got a three, what's the estimate? Six to 9,000, which is pretty reasonable for one of these paintings. Uh, some of them bring a lot more than that. This one was done, they figure, on 1835, which was pretty early in the U.S., the uh, uh, United States having a big presence in China, having a building there uh, during the China trade period. So, I mean, it was well underway, but this is a, a nice, nice painting. Very good. And then over here to this, I wanted to mention this was this was the Grogan auction that took place in Boston. Michael Grogan runs an auction house here. He used to be the head of the appraisal department at Sotheby's. He ran the rug department. He came from a family of people that were in the rug business. He knows rugs. And uh, he got the chance to auction off. This is a beautiful Central Asian Afghan uh, Baluch carpet that had been in the collection of James Opie who was a, 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 he's still alive, he's a very famous rug dealer, a scholar, he spent time in Iran uh, a meeting with weavers and villagers he's had a, since the 70s. He's had a fascinating life and he's a very nice man. I actually have gotten to meet him once or twice and uh, liked him very much and he's a good friend of Michael's and he decided to clean out some cupboards and this is the kind of thing he cleaned out. This is a beautiful Baluch prayer rug in beautiful condition, uh, early 20th century, 1900, 1910, somewhere in there probably. Uh, and it was just a wonderful example. And uh, we're going to start sharing some of these a bit more because they are part of the Asian culture, Chinese culture, Tibet, Mongolia, Afghanistan. They're all interwoven. And this was a wonderful rug. And I think it, it was a fair price, $2,500 plus the buyer's premium, which at Grogan's is a little stiff. It's 30%. But uh, he charges a bit less to the seller, so he's sort of working out that way to get the consignments, I guess. But at any rate, nice-looking rug with the human figures on it, uh, and it sold for uh, a good price. All right, and then on to this. This was the big thing in Michael's sale. Uh, if if you, some of you out there are familiar with Turkoman weavings, and you'll know instantly what this is. It's an extremely rare uh, Salor uh, Shuwal. This would be the front of a saddlebag. These are not terribly big. This one is four by three feet, four and a half by three feet. And it would have a back on it, and it would be used to store uh, things on, a, on an animal while, you, while they're traveling. These were nomads. Uh, this was probably never used as a saddlebag. It might have been used as a wedding gift or some sort of uh, for special occasions. But it was absolutely beautifully done, and it ended up selling for $60,000 plus the buyer's premium. So it would ring in at about $78,000 plus sales tax. But an absolute rarity, and these books have been these rugs rather have been discussed on numerous occasions by well-known scholars on uh, uh, Central Asian carpets and Asian textiles, and uh, this is among the Rolls Royces of that uh, genre. And it did just great. It did just great. It was a beautiful thing, and uh, I've, I've collected these these types of things for years. I do not own one of these. I wish I could, but I, I can't. I couldn't. Sh I can't bring myself to shout that money for one much money for one piece, no matter how wonderful it is. <laughs> All right, now uh, over here to this. If you like, if you're a Central Asian and an Asian rug uh, textile collector, this is a very interesting unreserved auction that's taking place um, over at the Austrian Auction Company in, in Vienna. Um, it starts uh, in 21 days. Uh, and they have some really nice tribal weavings, a lot of good Central Asian, Afghan pieces, Baluch pieces, and all that. So if you're if you're a textile, an Asian textile buyer, you definitely want to check that auction out. No reserves, all right. And they're a good company. The Austrian rug company is a good reputation. Austrian auction company. They specialize in rugs. That's their big thing. All right. And then over here to this, this sold um, um, this week. Uh, this was at uh, was this Stair? Was it? I believe yeah. Stair Gallery had this. This very rare um, armorial. Uh, export wall of uh, 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 wall dispenser why or you know um, a wall they call it a wall fountain it's really like a decanter but at any rate a very rare one with armorial decoration on it unfortunately it was overexposed when they took the pictures so you really can't see the colors that well but you get a better shot of it here there's the armorial crest on it this beautiful european later mounted they would make these in porcelain they'd get them to europe and then the europeans would add their spouts to them all right there's like a cistern and there it is, and it may have at one point had sort of a shell-formed dish that went under it to catch any, any drips from the spout once it was uh, finished dispensing. It had a two to three thousand dollar estimate. It sold for fifty five hundred plus the premium. And, and the reason is, is that it's just a very, very rare form. And uh, interestingly, it has on the bottom an old sticker from Eleanor Gordon. Uh, if you've been not collecting that long, you may not know who Eleanor Gordon was. But she was in Villanova, Pennsylvania, for many, many years. She did all the major shows. She was I, I did I did know her. She was awfully nice. She was, she was sort of chummy with my mother. Of all things, my mom used to love to go to these shows and buy things. So she did buy things from Eleanor, 
And uh, this was a, uh, when you see Eleanor Gordon's um, label on something, um, you, can, you can pretty well rest assured that it's okay uh, because she was an expert on especially China trade stuff. Uh, but I, I imagine when, when the fraudsters out there figure that out, they'll start printing that label. But at any rate, for now, I think you're safe. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing. Of course, tra labels can travel from one piece to another, as we've all seen around the trade. But um, at any rate, that is something Eleanor would have sold. And then on to this. This was one of the bargains of the week. I, I don't know where everybody was, but somebody got a great buy. <clears throat> it may have been because they put such a low estimate on it. I don't know. This was Alex Cooper. Uh, two to th uh, 250 to $350 for this very nice early 19th century gouache of uh, silk production in China. These were these done in albums, sold in sets, went for just $200. This was a nice painting. It had a few blemishes and bumps on it, but nothing terrible. And these typically sell for, you know, $800 to $1,200. So somebody got a very nice buy. And I like the old frame. I like the old frame on it. All right. I don't know if it was rebacked or something, but at any rate, $200 plus premium and shipping. Uh, you got you. Somebody got a great buy on that. Um, and they dated this as 1840 to 50. It's actually a bit earlier than that, probably closer to 1810, uh, about 30 years earlier, uh, this style of painting. But a wonderful example, and uh, somebody got a good buy. I hope one of the, one of the global uh, subscribers got that. that. That was a fabulous thing. Good buy. And then on to, uh, let's see here. Uh, this is the updated uh, live auctioneers page. We added a bunch of things on there. Some sales have closed since we updated it a few days ago. We'll update it again tomorrow. Uh, but there's a number of sales coming up in the next few days. And check out the Japanese sale that we added this week. And if you're a Japanese pottery and porcelain buyer, uh, there's some very good items in here this, this time around. It's a rare Katani, and this wonderful multiple spout uh, vase. This is actually borrowed. The Japanese borrowed it from the Chinese that made these. This is a Japanese uh, Kyoto pottery example. You want to check that out. That's good. All right. Now over to, uh, let's see, this is, I want to scroll back up because I'm too far down the page. I think this is the live auctioneers. Um, uh, oh, no, this is the newsletter page. Okay. Now we're getting into the newsletter page. <clears throat> the newsletter page last week was huge. I don't know if everybody noticed, but there was a lot of stuff on there uh, between Katawiki and eBay. And a number of the things that we had uh, did awfully well. And uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, get this load the load this was one of the things that sold this was that wonderful painting that i i just loved it that was being sold by Joni's up in canada of the elephant and and the young and the, and the, and the young attendant with the with a beautiful uh, uh bronze vase with flowers coming out of it wonderful colors and in the end it did well it was sort of languishing around at about 25 bucks last week and and toward the end it got some traction and ended up selling for 280. Uh, not a bad price though that is a charming picture and uh, you get, put a nice simple frame on it, and uh, I think I think whoever got it's going to love that picture for a long time. Nice looking work of art. And then over here to this, this was something else that Joni had up. Was this very nice part of a garniture set? Um, let's see if we can get a the fit in the frame here. So this this thing is so their pictures are so big. There you go. But it's it's one of these uh, Chinese export 1770s, 1780s uh, vases where they applied the uh, porcelain uh, vines onto it, and then had this. A uh, fairly well-known pattern that you see on punch bowls and tea sets. It's not, it's not a rare pattern, but it was a very nice example. This was really, a, really a nice example. And it ended up selling for $1,592. But it was well done, good color, good condition. It was very nice. It was a nice piece. And then over here to this, this was another surprise. It was up there. This is a beautiful Wutsai. Uh, 19th century vase from a seller over, I believe it was in France, had this. Uh, this big uh, a, a, a bottle vase. And... Um, Ended up selling for fifty-six hundred and forty-nine dollars. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Top fee, uh, 001 in, in Paris had this, but beautifully done. Beautiful example. Nice enamels. Loved the, the very thin, watery colors. The, the way the aubergine is done. The facial expressions were nicely done. I love the expression, the alarmed look on the face of the beast in the foreground, and everything. Just a nice thing. Fifty-six hundred and forty-nine dollars. But beautiful piece. And then over here to this was the rank badge, the military rank badge. Ended up selling for $2,300. Uh, 
uh, a very, very nice looking example. Very strong colors, very good colors. It is an old one. And uh, again, you see this familiar scene of the carp coming up through the waves, which has to do with, uh, it's, it's a Buddhist symbol of, of the fish rising out of the water and ascending, you know, that sort of thing. At any rate, nice looking, nice looking thing. It had 31 bids, and this was, I don't know the seller, seller boulderestates.sales.com. Um, they must have gotten it. It's out, they're out in Brighton, Colorado. So they must, I'm not familiar with that name, but they probably got it from a collection and got to sell it. And uh, they had this one also was another one. It was, a, it was another rank badge, also in beautiful condition, sold for $860. This is a civilian rank badge. I think this is a fifth rank. Somebody can correct me. Anyway, nice looking one, vibrant colors, um, uh, late, not, late Qing Dynasty, sold for $860, but very, very attractive. And then over here to this was that pair of, uh, of, of, of moon flasks, uh, the pair, the pair of hoo vases with the side handles. That was in, uh, it was marked as Guangxu period, and I didn't think it was. And I, I, in the end, I guess a, no, a few other people didn't think it was either, because instead of bringing, you know, you know, fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars, it ended up selling for fifty-nine hundred, which is about right for a really good pair of Republic period uh, vases. Uh, very, very nice and, and beautiful, beautiful color and nicely enameled. And they are a mirror pair, uh, which is nice. All right, you have a bird ascending from this side and a bird ascending from that side towards one another. If they're match pairs, just in case you don't know, it just means that the, both the birds and everything will be facing the same direction, no matter what, you know, if you, when you look at the piece. But this one is a, a mirrored pair, so it's, it's a bit more desirable um, over match pairs. Okay, now... Here we have this, this really pretty Famille Rose uh, sort of Yen Yen vase. Uh, this did awfully well, but it had a very interesting scene on it. And this is what sells these. If you, if you, there are Famille Rose vases in this shape that turn up all the time, 19th century, around this size, and they sell for, you know, 800 to $1,500. Um, sort of the typical price range, but this one had an interesting battle scene continuously running around it. The enamel, the enameling on it was quite good. The shading here, you can see, was very, very nice. Good facial expressions. All these little details. Here you have some more of it here. This very lovely, and, and this is beautifully shaded. The way the the orange robes were done with gilding onto them, added later after the enamel was put down. And then you have the, the, these very in, uh, nice facial uh, characteristics. And here they are standing in front of a screen with, again, uh, you know, crashing waves and clouds and all that. And uh, in the end, this did pretty well. It brought $3,338, largely owed to the fact that the decoration was so good on it. It was just absolutely great decoration. And then uh, let's pick the next one. Hop over to this. This was a lovely late Qing, early Republic period uh, figure of, 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 of a, a figure with a spotted deer. But the quality of the silk on this was really great. And I hope you took time to look at it. Uh, beautiful fine detail. And you notice the colors are still good, bright, and strong. Uh, muted colors on Chinese silk means that it's been in the sun too long. This is what you know, beautiful silk should look like uh, just vibrant colors and the uh, minor details of the way the faces were done, the eyes around the nose, the lips, the hair, all of it just, uh, she's got uh, the, hor the horsehair whisk hanging over her back and so forth. And this sold for $6,700, all right? And the reason was it was a very well done example, beautifully made, and these are pretty good size. Um, how big was this one? This one was, 300 centimeters tall, so 30 centimeters, it's about seven or eight feet tall. This was a great big thing. Um, and the, the embroidery itself was 149 by 72 centimeters, so it was uh, three, four, three and a half, four feet, excluding the mount. It was a good big textile, very nice, beautifully done. And you can hang these. If you, if you do get these, though, do not leave them hanging up year-round in your house, especially anywhere near a window. Let them rest for a while. Put them out for occasions because the silk and stuff do, does get stressed hanging um, all the time. Or bite the bullet and get it properly museum-mounted and framed. And you can't have it done. And I've done that with scrolls because I don't like to keep putting them away. So you get them tabbed, carefully mounted, and you can display them for permanently without too much trouble as long as they're not in a sunny window. <laughs> anywhere near one. And then over to this, that very nice late Ming or early Qing dragon silk. This was a beautiful thing. It was a lovely example. It got an awful lot of interest. I heard from a number of people about it. Um, they wanted to know what I thought. I liked it a lot. And I don't know who bought it, but somebody paid $21,000 for it. 
all right, and uh, had 94 bids, had a lot of interest. Uh, this was the seller up in Canada that must have gotten into a very good collection uh, because I, I think she had the, uh, the, the, the previous, uh, uh, didn't she have this? Yeah, she had the previous silk before that, and she's had some other things, or he had some other things being sold this week, and everything did well. He, looks like he had a $100,000, $150,000 week. <clears throat> now, on to uh, this, this very lovely carved horn recumbent Kuan Yin Late Qing, early Republic, but I don't care. The carving on this, I thought, and I said it last week, I thought was so nice. The way the fabrics are done, the facial expression, the knop in the hair, the way the body is done, all the proportions, everything done beautifully. Lovely carving. And uh, apparently everybody else thought so too, because it brought $2,800. But just elegantly done, good use of color, uh, the, the way the, the, the carver took into, uh, in, into account the, the color of the stone as it changed, as, as the horn as it changed to, to, make it, to make a better carving out of it. And that's always, you know, using the materials properly is so important. And that came out really well. And then on to this, the, uh, the mystery pair of vases. Um, big pair of uh, vases, from what I could tell from them, they are, uh, uh, these were, I, I, these brought a crazy price. Um, these were either late 19th or early Republic period. Uh, beautifully painted, nicely painted. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, and they're good size, unusual form. There's the foot rims and the bases. And those of you collecting know that, that that's a, these are very typical late Qing, sometimes early Republic vases. Uh, nothing unusual, other than the shape and form of these were quite unusual. And they ended up selling for $15,099. But remember, they were big too. You can see how small an apple is in this picture. All right, these were pretty, pretty big pieces of porcelain. And uh, they were extremely attractive, and a number of people just fell in love with them, I guess, and they chased it up. And uh, I'm not saying it's an overpayment uh, because they're sort of oddball um, uh, forms, all right? That's not a, it's, a, it's a sort of more of a Western, almost a Western beaker form, all right? And he did date them properly. And then back to this, this very, very pretty Yongshen uh, a jar my, missing its lid, but uh, a beautiful example. And uh, there's the bottom of one of these unglazed. And if you, if you want to compare what a, a, a mid 18th century, uh, uh, early, first half of the 18th century foot rim might look like on a big jar. That's it. Big, rounded, nice and white, and unglazed in the middle. And then you go back and compare it to that, that pair of beakers that sold for 15000 and you can get an idea of, of co comparison to understand the ages of these things and how they look different. All right, but anyway, this was a great example. And this jar brought $18,099. And this was, again, that seller in Canada. They had a big week. And then on to this, this was the bronze at Joni's. Apparently, uh, a couple of people were pretty upset by my comments about this. I, I wasn't, uh, uh, because I, I mentioned that, that they had said that it hadn't been, uh, they were going, it was going to go to an auction in New York and it never went and they decided just to sell it. And that wasn't completely truthful. It had been in New York and we showed the photographs of it in the catalog. And I guess that somebody got upset that I, I mentioned that because I think we got 24 or five thumbs downs on the video within, a, within hours of putting it up last week. So uh, I guess some people got upset. Well, I'm sorry, but the facts are stubborn things, so get over it. All right, um, and in the future, you know, Joni's, you'd be well advised if you if you see this video to stop messing around with dates and things because it's it, 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 there's no reason to do it. It's just it's bad business. All right, and and they know it is. All right, so anyway, enough said. All right, now mosey on. And uh, how did oh how did it do in the end? It did fine in the end. It brought fourteen thousand dollars, which was right about where we thought it would come in. Um, it was on the lower estimate of the uh, uh, low end lower end of the estimate that uh, Sotheby's had on it. Um, uh, we heard from somebody, um, uh, JW, I think it was one of our. He's one of our regular commenters. Um, always like to hear from him. He's got, always got his thoughts to share. And I believe he checked this vase out, and it turns out the base plate on it, they believe, was replaced. All right, and that might have been why it didn't sell at Sotheby's. All right. Uh, apparently, the, they felt, or he found out somehow that the the bottom through the condition report, the bottom plate on this uh, was a possible replacement, and that's why it it didn't get off the ground at Sotheby's back in September when it was offered first time, which is fine. Say the base plate is replaced because it's not going to do you any any favors if somebody buys it and they they don't know that. All right, and then on to this this nice uh, sort of later Ming period Celadon incense burner with this beautifully later carved lid. The jade finial on it. This was a nice package. They often took these incense burners in the late Qing Dynasty and they made lids for them. And they often didn't even bother reticulating them. They just made a closed lid just to seal it up. And on this one, they had this very nice jade uh, finial added. There it is. Beautiful picture of an, of an immortal or a scholar sitting down. 
uh, nice looking carving and it was a beautiful package and I think this was a great buy that that crisscross pattern by the way on this on this pot um, you, if you look at it you've seen it many many times also on a uh, 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 long con solid on uh, uh, vases these you know 8 to 12 inch vases typically some of them are bigger some of them are 15 inches but um, you see this 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 cross hatching pattern on those and occasionally you do see them also of course on, on incense burners but this was a nicely made piece and I think somebody got a very nice buy this was sold by bric-a-brac he's a good dealer out in uh, California and he lists things on here uh, Chinese things fairly often twenty two hundred and twenty five dollars good oh nice looking thing and then there, it was this. This was the other thing that did very well this week. It was this really interesting uh, uh, new form vase with um, upper and lower sections were done very much on the Chinese taste. We discussed it last week, but in case you missed it, the bottom with the swimming fish and the, and, the, and, the, and the carp and the crustaceans and all that. And then above the dragon ascending down through the clouds in pursuit of the pearl, of course. And then in the middle, you have this very interesting <clears throat> European landscape scene with cows like Northern Europe, Holland, that kind of thing, the brick buildings and the castles and all that. Absolutely, there's a, you know, a Dutch boat and all that in the Netherlands. Absolutely fascinating vase. And in the end, it ended up selling for $3,501, which was not a total surprise. I thought it might have brought a little less than that, but, but it's a rare thing. And I'm sure a lot of people looked it up to see how rare it is. Because that particular form from the 19th century in more typical export patterns and things, these typically sell for anywhere from eight to $1,200. Uh, but this was an ex a very unusual one and a very, I think, of a quite a rare example to have the, uh, the, the, the two tastes mixed together, the Chinese taste mixed with the, with the Western taste for the export market. And, uh, again, this was that seller up in Canada again. I hope they get more things. I don't know where they got all this stuff, but, boy, nice looking. And uh, it did just fine. And then on to uh, here. This was something that sold over in Catawake. I think it was a pretty good buy. $110 last week. Um, for this very nice, I think this was about a nine inch dish, but it had an unusual pattern with this, this beautiful lotus flower coming up with a, these very vertical uh, uh, pi, uh, ba uh, bamboo trees rising up behind it. And then these simple um, uh, floral uh, sprays run ar repeating around the outside with a good use of negative space. Uh, very attractive. There's the foot rim on it. And the back looks exactly the way it should. And somebody picked this up for 110 euros which I think was a good, a good purchase. It wasn't that big. Uh, this was uh, 22 inches, so about you know, seven or eight inch dish, but a very nice example, very attractive. All right, and then moving on over to this, the Famille Rose Spittoon, the Cuspidor. Uh, this was a nice one. I, I'm not crazy about the photographs they took. They could have taken better pictures. Show the whole piece, set back. There's a tendency to get too close when people take pictures. Stand back, give the piece a little room to breathe, give it a plain background. But this was a nice Yong Chen example, I think. Uh, it certainly looks Yong Chen to me. Nice bright yellows, good clear yellow, heavy uh, Famille Rose enamels. Uh, there, there's the top of it again. Good looking little pot. I thought this was very, very pretty. And it ended up selling for 700 euros, but not a, not a lot of money for that because it's unusual. In, in in beautiful condition and had beautiful coloring, um, a good looking thing. And then over here to uh, what's coming up? Let's take a look. There's a few things coming up this week. One of them is is this. Uh, uh, I noticed this the, the other day. It was up and it was it closes on Sunday, and it's a series of uh, silk panels with uh, immortals and, and and Chinese figures pursuing uh, different sort of daily uh, uh, daily activities. It's a really interesting set. Uh, late Qing Dynasty. Uh, sort of uh, unusually done uh, uh, type of needlework. So a bit of it's like Kisi and other parts of it are more like regular traditional needlework. And you see this scene. These scenes are, are, are fairly classical and were taken from Chinese paintings. Um, here they are playing Go. I love this guy's face. Look at that, look at that happy face. He's playing Go with his pal. And, and, and there's one of those interesting boxes that we've talked about before. We, they turn up at auctions and nobody knows what they're for. They're for holding Go pieces. And uh, they're very collectible. If you come across one, they can be worth a lot of money. And, uh, and then you have these, again, great facial expressions, all right? These panels are not particularly rare. I mean, they, they made them in sets and they, and they have good value. But when you see ones where the, where the expressions are so good, Everybody is an individual. Everybody looks different. And you look at all the different faces and you look at the quality of the dragon and the way the clouds are done and all of this over here. This is a very fine set. All right, there's some pulling here. I don't care. Um, either get it fixed or just snip it off. It doesn't make much difference. But uh, you see the, the, the furrowed brow and so forth. 
lovely set. It's got a couple days to go, and I think the I think the price on this right now is silly. It's so low for these. There's four of these, and uh, I I think each panel should be worth at least three or four hundred dollars minimum, minimum. All right, these are nice, and uh, I hope they 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 catch fire at the end because they deserve it. And if they end up selling for a thousand bucks a panel, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, they are very very nice, and uh, how big are they exactly? Because it's kind of hard to tell from the picture. A uh, hundred and 112 centimeters, so they are three or four feet tall, three and a half, four feet tall. There you go. Very nice, very, very nice. And then over here to this, this um, um, uh, imitation Ruware type sort of Claire de Lune vase. It's Qing Dynasty, later Qing. If you look at the piece, there's some nice orange peel in the glaze here. Um, here's a picture of the foot room. Very, very late Qing. Um, here's a picture of the mark on the bottom and so forth. There it is. All right, Late Qing, even maybe Republic, looking at the way this foot splays out a bit. Um, I do not think these are, 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 are caught. There's the interior. The glaze looks okay. Um, up to $310. This is Night Heron Antiques has this up in, uh, um, there in, uh, in North New Mexico. And uh, nice looking thing. I think in the end it'll probably jump up another five or 600 And then over here, this is closing in a few days. This is a very nice export market, uh, mid-18th century teapot. Uh, with uh, the, the it looks like Dutch sailors or traders at port, uh, the banners and so forth, nicely done. Uh, you know, check it out for yourself. But right now, it's it, it closes it closes in a week. You have plenty of time. It'll be in the newsletter this week with the with everything else we're showing you, and you can you can go check it out. But it, you know, that's a th uh, three hundred fifty to five hundred dollar teapot. So if you can pick it up for less than that, and you're a dealer, great. And if you want to add something to your collection, pay a little more. All right, and then over here to this, the Buddha. Haven't seen too many of these Buddhas lately. I've always liked them. One years ago, we had a guy had a collection of them. They were fun. And uh, this is a fun one, a nice one, probably Republic period from what I can see. It's got the impress stamp on the bottom. There's a good picture of the base. Nice thick base on these. As, they got, as, they, as, they, as time went on, by the 1950s, the bases on some of these got to be paper thin. But you can see the little iron and rust spots all over the bottom and uh, so forth. But this looks like a pretty good one. Check the condition report on it. Make sure it's okay. It's up to 510. Should bring, uh, what's, what's the size of this thing? I'll tell you. Eight inches tall. It should bring eight to $1,200. Uh, sometimes they can bring more. If that maker, if that mark on the bottom uh, leads to a particularly great uh, maker, then you can, you, can, you can sometimes see these going for $1,800 to $2,500. So we'll see. And then over here to this is a very nice uh, late Qing gold thread on silk robe up this week. Uh, a good-looking example of this very nice uh, Chifu robe, uh, good-looking dragon. And they did these in gold thread, and they also did them in silver thread. Uh, it depends on, on, on you know, wh where they were bought. The gold thread ones are particularly attractive. It's very elegant-looking. Gold against blue is very elegant, as we've seen with porcelains. When they do the blue, blue ground porcelains, they add gilding to it. Uh, gilt and blue are very complementary to one another. And uh, this, is, this is just a nice robe. Um, there's a good shot of it right there. Good looking robe. Ought to bring a couple of thousand uh, to, it's up to 2,400, up a couple of thousand to 4,000 dollars, somewhere in there. Um, well, I don't think it'll bring more than 4,000, but it's a good robe nonetheless. All right, and then um, all of this, this is a nice armorial plate. This is over on Katawiki. Closes uh, in a couple of days, it's up to $705. It is armorial. You want to look up that, uh, if you have the books, look up uh, this uh, particular crest and see who it is. And it might be somebody who's uh, hot stuff. And uh, by the way, you sometimes can check these armorial pieces um, in the price auction results at Bonhams and at Christie's. Um, you put in the name, and you might come up with it and get a better idea of, of high, the high-end market value. All right, and then also closing. This was in the newsletter last week. I put it in sort of in advance because I just liked it a lot. There's this very nice kung chi dish. Again, it's overlit. I don't know. So people... people Got to, got to lighten up on the lights a little bit. Boy, it looks it's kind of washed out. It isn't. That's a nice plate. And uh, at any rate, there, there's a better look at the color. All uh, right. No, don't get the reflections on it, but I love the lap. It's running around the outside. And this is up to, uh, what is this up to? It, uh, 400 euros. All right. And it should go a bit more. I suspect it'll go six to 800. And then over here to this, this closes in a couple of days. A very nice, what is this close? Uh, it closes on Sunday. 
Uh, very nice pair of faceted Famille Rose, second half of the 19th century vases. Uh, Good-looking cobalt enamels on them. I like the foo lions. With the, each one of them's got a ball in his hands and so forth, silk ball. Um, it, they're up to $573 uh, or 420 pounds. Um, this is Migalari. He has this. Migalari's got a bunch of stuff up, and they're all going to be in the newsletter this week. And uh, we'll see how that goes. They should bring the pair of vases in the end should bring, you know, eight to twelve hundred dollars. I would guess. Uh, how big are they? Let's get a more accurate guess here. Thirteen inches. Yeah. Eight to twelve hundred dollars. Probably somewhere in there. They could bring more if somebody loves them. They'd make spectacular lamps and you can make them into lamps without drilling them. So. So there you go. All right. Now, if you're a garden barrel buyer, this is a nice one. This is a nice big uh, rose medallion uh, garden barrel. But the quality of the decoration on this is particularly good. As you know, rose medallion comes in a huge range of qualities from mediocre to very, very fine. And uh, this, this, judging by this, this is the panel I wanted to show you. When you see this sort of fine detail in fruits and insects and so forth and these nice uh, lugs bosses going around the outside and just good detail all the way over, all the way around it up here. Um, it's going to do probably pretty well, probably a couple of thousand or so. But they're very attractive. Uh, the only problem with garden barrels is they're kind of hard to ship. Like the guys in the UK is going to ship it here. Shipping on it's going to be 125 pounds or about 160 dollars. Um, I understand it. We've shipped we've shipped garden barrels over the years many times, and they're a nightmare to ship because they're so big they pretty much exceed all the legitimate box sizes. It's very hard to get them crated up to ship. But Anyway, nice looking garden barrel. We'll see how that does next week. And then on to this. this is, and I can't remember if I mentioned this painting last week, but I think I did. Was this uh, very, and it's still there. And I can't believe it. I might buy it myself. Is this very nice Chinese export pith painting. Uh, this is a lovely painting. And uh, he's, it, it, and, um, you know, this is high end workshop uh, art from uh, the Hongs. And it's got about a $200 frame on it. And uh, it hasn't sold. I'm, I'm really surprised by that. I thought, by, uh, not just among all of you who watch these and get the newsletter, but I thought for sure somebody would scoop that up by now. That's a really nice painting. You know, off from 350 I bet at this point he'd take it. Good-looking picture. It's, it'll be in the newsletter. I'm going to leave it in there because I just happen to like it. I love the artwork. And not, it's a, not you don't always get the best buy at auctions either. Sometimes you get a very good buy just by buying it directly. If he'd put this up for auction and it went for $700, I wouldn't be at all that surprised. All right, but auctions tend to stimulate people to go beyond where they will go sometimes on a fixed price. All right, and, and it, it's it's funny. It, 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 people assume that the seller is putting it at the highest price possible for one of these, and that's how it is. That isn't true. Sometimes sellers put up things for for half of what they would bring at auction. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Well, when I was a when I'm more much more active picking and going around, I used to buy from retail antique shops all the time and put the stuff in auctions and do very very well with it. Uh, because they 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 they, you know, they just didn't know quite enough to really nail down the value, um, and, and this happens online just as well. All right, that's about it for the week. Um, we'll be back next week, and we'll keep an eye on uh, what's coming up. We're going to upload some of uh, Mr. Lally's catalogs into the reference section on bitamount.com um, either today or Monday. We'll get to it. We've, we've got a bunch of process. They take a do take a bit of time to do, and uh, if you like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up. Um, and if we said something that upsets you, I guess you give us a thumbs down. Just so you know, thumbs up and thumbs downs don't hurt your, hurt your rankings on YouTube. Sometimes people leave them thinking that it's going to hurt it, and actually it doesn't. They both count equally as interaction, which is which is what what they're looking for um, uh, when they do the algorithms on the on these big websites. They're looking for uh, uh, user user interactions, whether it's a, a comment or a thumbs up or a thumbs down or something. Um, they they like that so. The, the, I was thinking the other day that the 24 thumbs downs from uh, whoever I upset uh, on my comment about the bronze actually helped our website. I helped helped our YouTube channel. So thank you. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, I'll be, I don't know what we're doing this weekend. It's still winter here. So who knows? I don't know. Hopefully maybe we'll go out for dinner, um, do something. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.